Today I would like to introduce you to a new class of materials, so-called computing biomaterials. They can help you to stay healthy, either by making medication easier, safe and more compliant, or by warning you from toxic and forbidden substances in your food. How can such computing biomaterials take over this job? Computing biomaterials have built-in nanosensors that observe what is going on in the environment. For example, they sense whether you need a drug, or whether something toxic and forbidden is contained in your food, such as in milk. Once such computing biomaterials detect such a signal, they must start acting. How can they act? They can act by delivering a drug to your body, or by producing a warning signal that you should not consume the food that you just um, tested. However, we want to be sure that this output action corresponds perfectly to the input signal. And that's why we engineered source materials in a way that they can perceive the signals, they process the input signals, and then they compute the optimum output signal to give the optimum warning signal or the optimum drug dose to your body. And this computation of these signals gives the name of those materials. So, but what is so special about this? Any microcomputer can um, receive signals, process signals, produce an output. The key advantage of the computing biomaterials is that they are biocompatible and safe by design. So how can we achieve this compatibility and safety by design? Computing biomaterials are made from human-used, licensed, clinically validated materials. The built-in sensors and actuators are energy autonomous, they don't need any energy supply. And the materials are completely biodegradable. Once they are in the body, they can be excreted afterwards without leaving any traces. How can we make such innovative materials? We take the best from three disciplines. We take nanosensors, and nano-actuators from synthetic biology. We rewire them according to algorithms from computer science, and then we embed everything into a matrix derived from polymer chemistry. In the next slides, I would like to show you two examples of how such computing biomaterials can help you to stay healthy, and this research was realized in the frame of my ERC grant. In the first approach, I will show to you how computing biomaterials can help you to make medication safer and easier. It's the example of vaccination. So in classical vaccination, as all of you know, you need multiple injections until you are protected against the disease. These multiple injections are not only painful to children, they also require a medical visit, this is expensive, and um, often not available in developing countries where no medical doctor is around or the cooling chain is not available. Using computing biomaterials, we can overcome this bottleneck. We re can replace multiple injections by one single injection and replace the follow-up injection which you, which you would normally take by all the available tablets and you can swallow those tablets at home without the need of going to a medical doctor. We have done several proof of concept studies in mice using the single injection approach and we were able to show that the efficacy of the single injection vaccination is at least as good as for the classical conventional multi-injection based vaccination. And we have shown this with commercially available vaccines like a vaccine against hepatitis B or human papilloma virus, showing that we can readily adapt our technology to marketed vaccine products. So computing biomaterials can only be used for drug delivery. We have also shown that you can use them for ensuring food safety, for detecting forbidden or dangerous substances in this food. And we started by detecting forbidden antibiotics in milk. And in order to have a very specific sensitive and fast readout of such a forbidden antibiotic in milk. We invented something which we call biological transistor, and this we did by combining computing biomaterials with nanoscience and semiconductor technology. And we have shown that those biological uh, transistors provide a direct electronic readout of um, antibiotics in milk, and we were able to show that we can detect as little as four nanogram of antibiotics per liter of milk um, and, and the nice thing about this is that it's not only restricted to antibiotics. We have shown that you can use such um, um, biological transistors to detect a broad range of possible molecules, other toxic substances, heavy metals, and so on. So these are only um, two examples of how computing biomaterials can help you, drug delivery, 
um, food safety, but we have studies ongoing in patent applications pending on their use in tissue engineering or plastic surgery. But these are only a few examples of how um, computing biomaterials can help to transform biomedical engineering. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention. I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to discussing with you as a question of where you see areas where such materials or other devices um, um, could um, help in diagnostics or drug delivery to generate some societal and economical impact. Thank you very much. Looking forward to the discussion. Thank you.